Hi everybody, I'm Luke Edward with Luke Edward Home in Daphne, Alabama, and I'm getting ready to paint this mirror. You can see I've started it. And a funny thing, I painted one in a prior video that's the exact identical mirror. A client saw it and said, well, hey, can you paint mine? So I'm going to do it, different finish, different color, but I'm going to run you through it and show you how it works. Um, I've already uh, deglossed it with uh, my clean strip deglosser, wiped it down to make sure there's no residue on top of it. Uh, I'm going to do a base coat in uh, Benjamin Moore Aura, and it's called Brook Line Beige. It's an HC47 color. Um, I'm going to have an intermittent layer of cracked patina that I apply over it so I can pull the paint off of it and make it look aged. And then the top coat's going to be Elmira White, which is a Benjamin Moore color also. And I will show you how I do that when I roll it on and pull it off. And then the final thing is we're going to glaze it to add a little bit of schmutz or dirt. And you'll have a fabulous mirror and I'll get started and show you right now. So again, I've already started it, but all I'm doing is taking my paint. This paint, um, I'm not adding chalk to because I don't particularly want a heavy uh, textured finish. So this is just straight out of the can and I'm applying it with my cheap brush because I like the way it lays the paint down with a little bit of uh, inconsistency. But I'm going to cover this 100% and get it going. I've taped it off so I don't have to worry about cleaning the glass later or I have minimal cleanup. And when I come back in the next segment, you will see that I've got it all coated and what the next okay, thing Okay, all right, so now I've got my uh, first, the base coat on the piece of uh, the mirror, the finished mirror, and um, I'm going to add an intermittent layer of the product that causes the paint to chip away, which I've used in the last video, it's the same mirror or different thing, uh, cracked patina. It's an Amy Howard product, it's really good. It helps you uh, manipulate paint and reactivate. It doesn't give you the same effect as crackle glaze, which is the spider veiny, spider webby things. This looks more of a, like I said, a chip uh, paint. So I'm gonna partially roll it, partially paint it on. I just wanna get a good um, solid layer. And I've laid the mirror down because it just makes it easier um, to keep it uh, from running. If you are doing a piece that is vertical, you could put a fan behind you and the fan will slow, will speed up the drying time, which keeps it from running, or you can go back and rework it. Um, I found different ways to outsmart it so that it doesn't run, uh, but it can be done. So anyway, in the places where the um, roller doesn't fit, I'm just going to brush it on and get a good coat on top of it. It's starting to sis on top of the paint, but that's okay. It'll still work. And if you want to, you can go back after your roller and knock it back down. So it's an easy process. So I'll get all this done. I'll let it dry. And as I said earlier, or I may not have, it's all water-based, so it dries pretty quickly. And again, if you put a fan on it, it just speeds it up. So when I come back, I'll start the next process. Okay, so now I've got my coat of cracked patina on here. It's completely dry. You can see, I don't know if you can tell, but it kind of sisses on the um, surface, but that doesn't matter. It's still going to be okay when I have it done. And so what I'm going to do is apply this and I'm going to take, um, I'm going to apply my Elmira White on top of it. I'm going to use a combination of brush and a uh, roller and I'll do this segment here real quick. I still got it laying down. You can put it up if you want to, but you need to work faster if you do that. I'll take my brush and I'll start at my corner here and dab that in because the roller won't fit and I'm going to run this down. And it takes a few seconds for this to activate the under coat of the cracked patina. But you'll, you'll start to see it move. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to do it in a linear fashion and pull it off. And it removes the paint to look like it's chipped. And you can control however much you want on there. But anyway, that's what it's going to look like, the overall effect. And when I get through with this, I'm going to put another glaze on top of it, which kind of gives you that uh, waxed look or the dirty look or whatever. And we'll go from there. Okay, I'm so getting I'll ready right to back. glaze my mirror, I, uh, my frame. I just added all the chip paint to it. And as you can see, it's dried nicely. and. You want to pay attention to how you do this. I've just removed strategic areas of paint, whereas, you know, weather would have taken its toll on it. <clears throat> if you can just imagine this was hanging maybe in an old house that didn't have climate controlled air or, air or heat, that the paint would uh, chip off with the contraction of the wood from hot and cold, you know, winter, summer, that kind of thing. So you can see it's just very random, nothing planned out so that it looks like it's a natural antique. So this is what we started out with, which was the black and gold. You can remember the other video had the same mirror two different people. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a glaze on it to kind of give it just a little bit of a patina and catch some of the highlights in it with some glaze. And I'm taking aqua cream, which is a clear medium, and I'm adding stain and steel, which is American walnut, <clears throat> to make it have that stain look. And I mixed it into a separate container. And I'm going to take it and just apply it uh, with a chip brush. And I do sections. It just sort of melts into the paint. It's really a great product. Now it takes a little time to dry, depending on where you are. I give it about three or four hours to dry, sometimes longer, depending on the humidity outside. I'm not over applying. It just kind of gives you that little bit of an edge of a patina. And then I'm gonna take a so soft cotton um, T-shirt because it's absorbent and sort of wipe it off. So you can see how this works. So I'm going to cut away. When I come back, I'll have the rest of it done and you can see it. And after that, the next step would be to clear cut it and coat it and hang it in the client's house. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I'm at the end of this. I've laid it down so it'd be easier to handle. And I'm just putting the final glazes on it so that it has its little patina going on. Um, if you see I move around, my piece of work pretty frequently. I don't want anything contrived or brush marks or whatever. I want it to just look like it's just natural coal dust or smoke from a fireplace if it's been hanging over a mantle or something like that. Natural dust, everyday living over the last hundred years, you know. So I will, as I said in earlier videos, I always clear coat everything. I'll put a matte finish on it by Modern Masters, which gives it that dead flat uh, finish. I do that as a protective coat um, so that if somebody decides to move it or whatever, my finish I put on it is also protected. Um, some of the waxes you can buy that have carnival wax like Amy Howard, which is a good one, <clears throat> they do harden over time so they give you a pretty um, durable finish. But I like the acrylic washable uh, water-based um, clear coats that you can use. And I will stand this up in a little bit and I'll show you how it looks before we take it to the client's house to hang it. Okay, so I stood it back up. You can see it with the patina put on it. It's gonna dry. As I mentioned, it'll take about four or five hours, six hours, something like that. And then I'll put my clear coat on top of it. And in the next shot, you'll see what be the installation at the client's house where they're going to use it. So hang on. Everybody, a day or two has passed. And I finally got the mirror to the client's house, and this is what it ended up looking like in her beautiful dining room. You can see it's on a great shade of gray on the walls, so it really stands out. And from the studio to here, I want you to notice that I put highlights of gray on it because I wanted it to stand out more. I felt like after looking at it and doing a final review, it was a little too boring. So if you look in the, in the cracks here in the crevices, I've added some gray um, highlights to it. And I knew that I would do that because of her gray decor in the house. So anyway, this is the finished product and I want you to partake and enjoy Luke Edward Home in Daphne, Alabama. Thanks.